Okay, so Nicolas Cage escapes from hell, like in Ghost Rider, except he's not Ghost Rider. Um, he also needs to save his family, like, like in Punisher. Alright, so he escapes from hell, and he has a magic gun, which he uses to fight uh, a man who stole his baby and runs a cult. There is an attractive young lady who he picks up about three quarters through the trailer, who is there to help him fight the cult, get his baby back, and defeat the other devil. He's not the real devil. He's his second-hand man. Uh, there's a lot of wit, a lot of play on words. Academy Award winner Nicolas Cage uh, decided to use his cool... He doesn't have a motorcycle this time. He uses cool cars and has blonde hair. And he has to defeat the devil and the devil-worshipping humans to save his baby with, with his new girlfriend, uh, who's about half his age, and save them and defeat the devil. Unfortunately, uh, as of next summer, the summer of 2011, there is going to be a Smurf film. The Smurfs will be CGI interacting with the real world. Uh, this trailer begins with uh, an ominous voice, an announcer voice, a trailer appropriate voice between text and a wave of ominous energy transforming popular world-known icons into a blue and white color theme before finally plopping down on Times Square revealing the Smurfs, small in stature, about three, four inches tall. The Smurfs will no doubt uh, interact with real people and other Smurfs, much like a great many franchises being redesigned into the CG world just before their audience is too old to ever buy them again, or perhaps their audience is old enough to maybe die. Uh, they are being brought back to the world uh, for children, almost exclusively, and the Smurfs are coming. The film is called The Smurfs, and apparently America will be getting smurfed this summer. Okay, so Ed Helm is a man-child who never grew up, and it's too old for him to be acting as immature as he is. So he goes to an insurance convention with his family to defend his family business. This is Tommy Boy, uh, except with Ed Helm. He goes to an insurance convention at a hotel, and not only is he still immature like a child in that he's never taken responsibility, he's also never had the essential developmental phases of his life to become an adult. And so he meets John C. Riley, who is kooky and is also immature, but in a much more adult way. Together they have parties, and the uh, audience lives vicariously through their exploits. Maybe from uh, Arrested Development is in this, but she's older and also very unpleasant looking. John C. Riley and Ed Helm become close friends, as is established several times, despite not knowing each other, and in the end they both come back, like in What Happens in Vegas. Battle, Los Angeles, aka District 9, aka Independence Day, a.k.a. Paranormal Activity 2 in public, a.k.a. The Fourth Kind, a.k.a. A Great Many Handheld Modern CG Thrillers, a.k.a. Cloverfield, is a story that you have purchased several times. In this film, aliens come unexpectedly to Earth. The aliens have transcended time and space just to break downtown Los Angeles. Uh, there seems to be a great deal of human drama implied, including loss, uh, extensive loss personally, and the greater sense of loss of the destruction of one's home and others' homes. This loss is not felt by the audience, as the damage is fake. And these characters are unrecognizable, in any way, shape, or form from these characters, 
from the other films that we have seen, like Cloverfield and District 9 and Independence Day and Godzilla 2000, to add to the list. The CG monsters come, uh, do not like us, and you've seen this film before. I can't, I can't stress it enough that nothing new happens. It's, uh, watch it yourself. And <laughs> Nanette is the story of a fat, ugly, old orangutan. This orangutan lives in a zoo in Paris. She, assumably, is the oldest animal in the zoo, as they state in the trailer. Uh, Nanette spends a great deal of her time uh, doing nothing and looking ugly and a bit off, to say the least. Uh, this animal uh, is commented on, people comment on the animal. In French, there are subtitles and state what a sad animal she is. Her conditions are, while not cruel, small and very different from her native home. The orangutan uh, is live action. She is not a cartoon or CG or animated in any other shape or form. The orangutan is unappealing to look at. Uh, spends a great deal of time unkempt with a great deal of straw and other material in her hair. The ape uh, assumably lives throughout the entire film. That is yet to be determined as when we all go see Nanette in theaters this spring. This film appears to be about an older actor coming to a modern traveling carnival, a traveling circus, and when in the office of the circus manager he finds pictures from his past. His past where he was Robert Pattinson, Edward Cullen from the Twilight series, who falls in love while working on this old-timey carnival. In the circus, it is shown that this, this wonderful spectacle seemed larger than life and was at the time the greatest circus on earth. He falls for Reese Witherspoon, who is in fact dating the charming Nazi from Inglorious Bastards, who is the ringleader and conductor of said circus. Robert Pattinson, uh, who, by the way, will be playing Salvador Dali in a film to be coming out equally poorly cast, will, I'm sure, show Reese Witherspoon the merits of love uh, and the honesty of it, despite the tricks and tomfoolery of previously mentioned Nazi. <laughs> this looks awful. <laughs>